Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Encinosa, founder of Boyette Animal Hospital. Hope you guys are enjoying the last few cool mornings of spring uh, that we might get this year. As the title implies, we're going to be talking about fleas and flea control. And as it turns out, fleas also enjoy spring. So let's get on with it. I want to tell you a few things that you might not know, probably don't know about fleas and flea control. Number one, spring and fall are the primary flea seasons. Contrary to popular belief, fleas do not like 94 degree heat and 90% humidity in the summertime any more than we do. They actually reproduce much, much, much more efficiently in the spring and to a lesser degree in the fall. If you think about it, that's pretty much the environment we try to maintain in our houses as well. You know, 72 to 75 degrees, moderate humidity. And that implies that unlike out in your yard where fleas can be seasonal, they can be all year long in the house. Number two, our problem child in this area is the cat flea, Tenocephalides felis, not the dog flea. Turns out fleas are equal opportunity parasites. They can infest a wide range of hosts, not only your dogs and cats, of course, but also uh, things like uh, raccoons, possums, bobcats, foxes, coyotes, all of which we have a lot of in this area. Interestingly enough, there are some animals that fleas do not parasitize. Uh, that includes squirrels and wild rabbits. Notice I said wild rabbits because fleas do tend to like domestic rabbits. Don't ask me why. They also do not like deer, horses, cows, wild pigs, or people because our blood is not nutritionally complete for them. So if you're one of those people who have said, well, I can't have a flea problem because fleas love me. And if I had any fleas, they'd be all over me. It's not true. By the time fleas are biting you, your problem is much, much bigger than what you realize. Number three, fleas don't find their next blood meal by using body heat or by using carbon dioxide like mosquitoes do. They use light and they use vibrations. So here's the flea's life cycle in a nutshell. The flea is on your dog or cat feeding on blood. As soon as it feeds on blood, it lays a gazillion eggs. Those eggs then fall off into the environment and they stay there for a little while, uh, but then they hatch. They hatch into little tiny larvae that look like caterpillars. Um, you can see them with the naked eye, but they're very tiny. Those caterpillars, those larvae eventually spin a cocoon or a pupa, just like a butterfly. And those cocoons or pupa can lay dormant for months, maybe even over a year. And what stimulates them is vibrations. So somebody closes the door, somebody's walking by, they feel the footsteps on the carpet or on the tile floor and the cocoons hatch out. As soon as they hatch out, the fleas will climb out and they will orient themselves towards the light. It could be your favorite reading lamp in the house. It could be the sun out in the yard. It could be the sun coming through the window, but they will aim themselves at that light and sit on their haunches and just wait. And what they're waiting for is a shadow. As soon as the shadow passes, they jump. Sometimes they land on what they're aiming for, sometimes not. If they don't, they hit the dirt, they reorient themselves, sit on their haunches and wait for the next shadow to pass. Pretty primitive, but pretty cool. And it works, works well for them. So enough about fleas' personal lives. Now, how do we kill the little suckers? And pun intended, because that is what they do. Fortunately, it's easier today than it has ever been in my lifetime to control fleas. I wrote a book on fleas 35 years ago. Don't go out and try to buy it. It's no longer in print. And for good reason, because pretty much everything I wrote in that book is now obsolete flea life cycle and so forth, we know a lot more about now than we did then. And the methods that we used and the chemicals that we had to use back then were much more complicated, much more dangerous for you and for your animals, uh, much more expensive um, and, and just terribly time consuming. And at best, we would only partially control the flea problem. The products we have now, the medications we have now are infinitely safer for your animals, uh, infinitely more toxic to the fleas that we're trying to kill. They're less expensive and a whole lot easier to use. The reason they're safer for your animals and more toxic to the fleas is because they exploit a neurologic pathway and certain neurotransmitters that mammals simply don't have, but insects do. 
And that's why nowadays, if you have three dogs, three cats, and three acres of property, and your dogs and cats come in and out often, you can actually deflee your pets, deflee your house, and deflee three acres in most cases by just giving them some of these newer medications that we use. So it's so much easier than it was before. Now, for those of you that have a penchant for natural methods, um, knock yourself out. I've tried them all before from castor bean trees to tobacco dust to uh, diatomaceous earth. And frankly, none of them work nearly as well as we would like. Some of them don't work at all. Um, but most of them tend to be a little bit more toxic to yourself and to your kids and to your pets and not nearly as toxic to the fleas as we would like. So in short, don't wait for summer. Summer will be too late in many cases and you'll be behind the eight ball and you'll have to play catch up. Spring now when they're hatching is the best time to get them under control. We can help you with that. We can figure out the best products for you and your family. So just give us a call. Thanks.